This isn't gonna work well. <laughs> it's fun. If you are thinking about getting into model rare wedding or you are already an addict, boy, do we have a project for you. In this episode, we harness the power of the Hoover Dam, starting right now. Hey, welcome to It's My Railroad, the how-to show for regular people. On this show, we celebrate regular people building their model railroads because we're just regular people and we're trying to build a model railroad. We have a lot of fun on this channel, really building a great community here. So if you're into that sort of thing, why not just subscribe? And then don't forget to push that little bell icon. It's over there, I guess. <laughs> so you don't miss future videos. Anyway, wasn't that an awesome opening from Cindy Brown, First Lady of Model Railroading, who came in to check on me because I've been living out here lately. Anyway, I think we'll let her go back to whatever she does and uh, we're going to get back to work, right? Right. All right. All right. Now, get out of here. This man's work. All right, rail fans. Let's get into this. It's probably not a really smart idea for me to tell you right now at the beginning of the video that what's coming up is not the most exciting thing you've ever seen us do here on It's My Railroad. By no means at all. But it had to get done. In this episode, we are going to run all the high voltage power from the outlet up here where the garage door opener plugs in all the way down to a switch bank and some plugs. And the reason I say it's not the most exciting thing is because it's kind of tedious. It's like wire and screws uh, for days. That's what it is. So uh, you're going to get to see the details of how I did it here kind of at the beginning. And then I'm going to speed through some of it and get you to the end and then show you the finished product. But come the end of the day, uh, we had to get this done so we could start getting our lighting going, our DCC going, and our auxiliary power. And I've done that, and that paves the way to get a whole bunch more stuff done. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be electrified right now. Hey, welcome back to the Hobby Room. It is January 25th. It's a Friday afternoon, late afternoon. And today I get to use this hobby room for exactly what I have a hobby room for. And that is this, to escape the reality of my day job. Oh my gosh, if I didn't have that beautiful woman, Cindy Brown, the first lady of model railroading, to come home to, and my railroad to immerse myself in, I don't know what I'd do. I'd, I'd lose my mind anyway. Luckily, we don't have to worry about that right now. Today, what I want to get done is I want to put four switches in right here, four switches. Um, one of those switches is going to control the power to this garage door opener. Now, here's the thing. Uh, you come out here, you're stumbling around, you push the wrong button to open the wrong garage door. This one opens up over here in the hobby room. We don't want that to open up unless we want that one to open up. So I'm going to have an interlock here is basically what I'm going to call it. You have to have that on for that to get power. So when that button gets pushed, it rolls up and then we don't have to worry about it anymore. I might actually paint it red just to be thorough. Uh, I'm gonna have another switch that's gonna turn on the DCC to the layout so I can turn, I can power the layout um, independent of lighting and other stuff. Another switch will turn on all the LED lighting above the decks. And the fourth switch is auxiliary. That's gonna turn on the lighting to all the structures and, and all that kind of detail kind of lighting stuff we're gonna have. Anyway, that's my plan. So uh, each of those switches gets routed to a receptacle somewhere down here in the hobby room. I will show that to you later. Um, ultimately, we'll get the power from the um, receptacle that's right there where the garage door opener is now, and then feed that power back up to feed that. I think that's it, actually, as far as the switches go. Oh, I'm also gonna have one permanent power receptacle, just, you know, because sometimes you need permanent power. And then back here in two or three places on the layout, right under the second deck, I'm gonna put a convenience outlet. So when I'm working on the layout, if I want to plug in a soldering iron or something, I don't have to run cords all over the place. Um, I just plug them in and Bob's your uncle. So anyway, to get started on this, I'm going to get the box I'm going to set here. I'm going to screw it down. And then I think I'll go ahead and run the MC cable up and get started on this thing. Okay, so to get started, uh, first of all, I'm going to get this out of the way. That's the power to the little mini fridge I have under the layout. We're going to route that power differently when we move forward. but. Uh, I want to mount this box right here, and I'll show that to you in a second, but I need the elevation. And what I decided to do is over here, when you first come into the garage, there's two light switches there. Uh, one of them turns on the lighting above the hobby room. And I figure, you know, I can pick whatever height I want. I decided to set it at that same height, and that is 46 inches. So to the center of this box, we're going to want it to be 46 inches. 
So let's just make a mark right there. Like that, easy enough, 46 inch mark. Now let me grab the box, my screw gun and some screws. We'll zip that sucker right down. Put the drill in the correct speed mode. Like that. Uh, around here in our building code, we drive three screws when we set a box. So that's what I'm doing. Well, there you go. Got the box set and let's call it a day. Ah, just kidding. A lot more to do than that. Uh, what I think I'll do now is let's get the MC cable up through this top plate and just sort of hang it out for now. Uh, last thing we want to do is put that all the way up into the box where it goes to actually feed the power. Let's get all this rough end stuff done first. There's a drywall screw right there that I put in to hold a cable out of the way. I got to get that screw out of there before we go any further. Oh, I'm glad I'm tall. By the way, I am using uh, what we call a paddle bit to get this done. Um, some guys might want to try to use a hole saw or something like that. Uh, these paddle bits actually rip right through a piece of wood. Uh, a hole saw takes forever to get through and then you got to take the chunk of wood out of the hole saw. So um, I've got these all the way up to about an inch and a half just here. This one, as it turns out, is really rusty. I think it got left out in the rain when we moved, but uh, still cuts like a son of a gun. And uh, now we have a hole up here that we can run the MC cable out. Let's do that now. Incidentally, uh, we made the video about putting this lighting in up here above the hobby room. And when we did, I introduced you to MC cable. That's uh, Mike Charlie cable. Uh, it's an armored cable that's got wire in it already. It's kind of easy and convenient to use. It's a little pricey, but it works. And the one we used up there, though, had three wires in it. There was a green one for ground, a white one for neutral, and then there was the power wire itself, because that's all we needed, one circuit. Down here, what I intend to do is bring a circuit down and then run a, what we would call, switch leg back up to the receptacle to power it up off the switch. So I bought 12-3 MC cable, which it might be a little difficult to see, but... It's got a green ground, it's got a white neutral, and the black power carrying conductor. This is also technically a power carry conductor, the red wire. But again, that's the one I'm going to use for the switch leg to put it up there. So anyway, I'm going to take and put a connector on that, stuff it in that box, tighten it down, and then we'll move further down from there. The connector on, we just slide it down in through the knockout. Run the lock nut back up on there, and then just go ahead and tighten it up. Standard disclaimer, if you're not an electrician, uh, either get someone who is, or come up with a plan B, all right? I don't want to get sued any more than I already do because I was showing electrical work and something blew up, all right? Let's just move on from there. All right, got the power coming in to feed everything, uh, by the way. And if for some reason it turns out that this one circuit that I'm bringing for my panel right now can't handle the whole layout, I have access to a second circuit that I have to bring in here and, and break up the power. So I hope I don't have to do that. That's why LED lighting and stuff doesn't draw too much power. But in any case, um, right now we need to get from here to where the power receptacles are going to go. And that's going to be right here around the corner. Let me set up and show you that. Okay, so here we are behind the layout. Uh, right over here is the wall we just put the switches in. Here is uh, the back of the layout, and that is racking right there. Now, here's the thing. We're going to have trains running back here on sort of the back side of what we're calling like the helix, but it's not really a helix, but I guess it is a helix. I don't know. You call it what you want to. Here's what I'm going to call it, something else. But um, I want to put the power outlets here because I'm hoping that underneath this section, I can put stuff that needs to get powered, transformers and junk, just keep it all back here and then poke the relevant wires through the layout and run them along underneath the deck. So that's just the way I'm gonna do it. Uh, if you have a different way of doing it, get her done. I'm okay with that. Anyway, the layout on the other side to the bottom of the framework is 32 inches. So I want the top of this box I'm gonna put in to be 
right there at 32 or just below 32 inches. I already have a mark that I made there for it. Here's why. I'm not exactly certain how we're going to come through here. And if I have that thing sitting up here like this and a train needs to go there or something, uh, I kind of screwed myself. So this right here will put it below any potential framing or whatever will be running back here. So that's where I'm going to set this box and I'll set another one just like it on that stud over there. Then we'll run some cable between it. All right, so with those two boxes set down there around the corner, what we need to do is get the cable out of this switch box, up through this stud, and then down into those boxes. And again, we're gonna bring in our old friend, the paddle bit, and try to get it so we make a nice arc up and over like that. This is only a two by two, so I don't need to drill a hole through it. The cable will pass right over there. I'll strap it down, perhaps. Um, then go through here and then drop right down to there. Let's just pop some holes and quit talking about it. One down. Two down. Just like you've seen us do before. Knock out the knockouts. Standard pair of dikes. Just something to pound it in with and grab a hold and break that sucker off. Cause that's how I rail, baby. Then we're gonna route some cable through it. Okay, so uh, I don't have enough MC cable to get all of this done. Um, and this stuff's not cheap. So what I did, uh, I've got a lot of slack in coming up and over and going into those boxes. So uh, baby, I just lowered it. I'm just gonna, not gonna have so much slack. I drilled two new holes. We're gonna pull the cable out of the holes. I put it in and stuff them into the other holes because nothing will hold back a regular guy. Model railroader, um, not even MC cable. So I'm gonna pull them out and stuff them back in. With those two runs in through the new holes, I'm going to do the same thing you've seen me do. I'm going to go through and um, cut the MC cable, stuff it in the connectors, and then I'll move down and around to there, do the same thing. Then we can put in the devices is what we'll call them. Isn't that amazing? You're learning something about electrical from an electrician. It's amazing. Well, there we go. We got the power that comes down into our little switch bank right there. And the cable coming through these holes we re-drilled, move along, and comes down into these two boxes down here. I took the liberty of adding this cable to it to send power to the other side of the layout that's going to always be on. And I'll have one receptacle here that's always on uh, and not switch. Now, understand something. There's nothing really exciting about what I'm getting ready to do. <clears throat> it's uh, stripping wire and putting on terminal screws. So I think I'll just uh, get my music going over there and just spend a little time getting these devices all set in there. Then I'm gonna come back and show you what I did. And then uh, we'll move on into the hobby room to extend some of that power out somewhere else. All right, so I went through and I finished the rest of the electrical. Now, like I was saying, not the most exciting thing to be watching on YouTube, but uh, it had to be done to pave the way for putting our lighting in, hooking the DCC back up and getting some of these things moving here on the layout. But just before I let you go, I'd like to show you really quickly what I got done and how it looks. Up above me, I've got the handy box extension where I dropped the outlet down and then ran the power and switch leg out of that down the wall to the switch banks. Now this switch right here, turn it on, turn it off. That turns on and off the garage door opener and it works really well um, at this point, frankly. These other three switches control these three receptacles so I can turn on my DCC, my LED lighting, and then of course my auxiliary lighting and auxiliary power. Lastly, I added these convenience receptacles here right under the top deck to make it a little easier to get power out here when I need it. And you know, this is the kind of thing we do here on It's My Railroad. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe so you can catch more of them and give me a big thumbs up down there if you will too. I really had a good time with you here today. I hope you had a good time too. 
And until next time, again, my name is Steve Brown. Rail on, my friends.